Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create spectacular northern lights over a vast starry night sky. I provided a Photoshop template so you can follow along. Its link is in the description below the video or in my project files. It includes two layers, a cutout silhouette of trees and a dark blue background. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. First, we'll create a vast star field. We'll place it below the trees. To do this, control click or command click the new layer icon. We'll fill the empty layer with black. But before we do, check your foreground and background colors. If they aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since black is our foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. We'll convert the black layer into a smart object in case we want to adjust the amount and brightness of the stars at any point. Click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter, Noise, and add noise. Make the amount 35%, Gaussian, and monochromatic. Go back to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Make the radius 0.3 pixels. Open Levels by pressing Ctrl or Command L. Make the input black level 130, and the input white level 175. Change the blend mode to screen. Let's save some space in the layers panel by collapsing the smart filters. Make a new layer below the active layer. Open your brush tool and brush picker. Pick a soft round brush. Make the size 700 pixels, the hardness 0%, and the opacity and flow 100%. Click the foreground color to open the color picker. In the hexadecimal field, type in B, 9, 1, B, B, F. Place your cursor approximately here and brush across to the other side. Reduce its opacity to 40%. Make the stars layer active and make a new layer above it. We'll place it into a folder by dragging it to the folder icon. Make the layer active. Click the foreground color and type in 63FF72. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Open the brush picker and make its size 300 pixels. Brush across a stroke similar to mine. Change its blend mode to color dodge. Make a new layer and press D on your keyboard to revert your foreground and background colors to black and white respectively. Go to Filter, Render, and Fibers. Make the variance 35 and the strength 64. Let's convert this layer into a smart object so we'll have the ability to adjust any of the filter settings for it. Go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. Make the angle 90 degrees and the distance 500 pixels. Go back to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Make the radius 8 pixels. Let's collapse the smart filters to save space. We want the fibers layer to show only through the green brush stroke under it. To do this, we'll make it into a clipping mask by pressing alt Control g on Windows or Option-Command-G on a Mac. You can also go to Layer and create Clipping Mask. Make the green stroke active and open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. 
We'll need more room, so let's zoom out by pressing Ctrl or Command and the minus key on our keyboard. Go to the top middle anchor point and press and hold Alt or Option as we drag it up approximately this much. Then press Enter or Return. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the green brush stroke. Reduce the size of your brush by pressing Ctrl or Command and the left bracket key on your keyboard. I made the brush size 125 pixels. Brush over the middle of the stroke. Press X on your keyboard to invert the foreground and background colors. Then brush over the ends to taper them. If you want to slide it up or down, press V to open your Move tool and press and hold the Shift key as you drag it down or up. Pressing Shift keeps it vertical. We'll make a copy of these two layers by shift-clicking the Fibers layer to make it active as well and pressing Ctrl or Command J. Click the top Fibers layer and change its Blend Mode to Linear Burn. Go to Layer 3 and click off the Chain Link icon which unlinks the layer and the layer mask. This allows us to adjust either of them independently of the other. Click the layer to make it active and zoom out. Go to Edit, Transform, and Perspective. Go to the top right anchor point and drag it up approximately this much, and go to the top left anchor point and drag it down approximately this much. Press Enter or Return, and then zoom back in. Next, we'll feather out both sides. Make the folder layer active and click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to it. Press B to open back your brush tool and increase its size to 400 pixels. Go to a top corner and drag your brush straight down past the bottom of your image. Repeat this on the other side. Collapse the folder and make a copy of it. Open the folder copy and make the top green brush stroke active. Change the Blend Mode to Overlay. Shift-click the layer mask to hide it, and hide the layer mask under it as well. Make the layer next to it active. Open your Transform tool. To see the Transform's entire bounding box, press Ctrl or Command-0. Go to the top middle anchor point and press and hold Alt or Option as you drag it down approximately this much. Drag it up and feel free to stretch it some more and rotate it if you like. When you're happy with it, press Enter or Return. Zoom back in. If you want to finesse its location, open your Move tool and drag it. Next, we'll feather the sides a bit more. Close the folder copy and make its layer mask active. Open back your brush tool and go above the top right corner a bit to the left. Drag it straight down and repeat it on the other side. Click off the eyeball icon next to the trees layer to temporarily hide it. We'll make a composite snapshot of our visible image by pressing Alt Control Shift E on Windows or Option Command Shift E on a Mac. Make the trees layer visible again and go to Edit, Transform, and Perspective. Go to a bottom corner and drag it out approximately this much. Then press Enter or Return. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.